consider supporting Archeosoup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in video description. Thank you. Did you know? Welcome to the Theatre Royal Haymarket. This is the third oldest playhouse still in operation in London. It opened in 1720 and is a Grade 1 listed building with a seating capacity of 888 people. It is incredible that such a building still stands, not least because in 1749 it was the site of a riot. This is John Montague, second Duke of Montague. One day, the Duke made a bet with his friends. He was convinced that with an advertisement claiming that a man could creep into a quart bottle, he would fill a theatre. We don't know for certain if the bet was agreed upon, but soon, just such an event was being advertised across London and in several prominent newspapers. The advert read as follows. At the new theatre in the Haymarket, on Monday next, the 16th instant, to be seen, a person who performs the several most surprising things following. First, he takes a common walking cane from any of the spectators, and thereon plays the music of every instrument now in use, and likewise sings to surprising perfection. Secondly, he presents you with a common wine bottle, which any of the spectators may first examine. This bottle is placed on a table in the middle of the stage, and he, without any of equivocation, goes into it in the sight of all the spectators, and sings in it. During his stay in the bottle, any person may handle it, and see plainly that it does not exceed a common tavern bottle. Those on the stage, or in the boxes, may come in masked habits, if agreeable to them, and the performer, if desired, will inform them who they are. The house was full, and the stage was lit, for a show beginning at 7pm. In the crowd was the Duke of Cumberland, the King's second son. This was truly an event, though one with no music to entertain the crowd. The crowd grew increasingly restless and began to voice their displeasure. Eventually, a candle was thrown onto the stage. At this point, the Duke took his leave as did others, who reported losing a cloak, others a hat, others a wig, and swords also in the increasingly angry fray. People began to gut the theatre. Benches were ripped up, scenery was ruined, and boxes were utterly demolished, debris being dragged into the street and promptly set alight in a riotous bonfire. Immediately, the theatre's manager, Samuel Foote, came under close scrutiny for the hoax. He swore he knew nothing about the hoax, though he had warned the theatre's owner, John Potter, that he suspected that something was amiss. Potter himself said that a strange man had dealt with all the arrangements for the performance. The man in the bottle, or the so-called bottle conjurer, became a subject of fascination in newspapers and pamphlets of the day, who could not help but remark, with cutting satire, on the performer's non-appearance, and also its consequences, and English credulity. Ye were all bottled, read one headline. One newspaper, tongue firmly in cheek, I imagine, suggested that the magician had been rehearsing when a thief took off with the bottle. An incredible but true story in the history of one of London's oldest theatres. It's remarkable to think that, quite possibly, an aristocrat put an advert in a newspaper and convinced people that they were going to see a magician climb into a wine bottle. Thank goodness people these days aren't so gullible. You'd never get modern people falling for a posh person with a name like, I don't know, uh, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson, <laughs> writing some nonsense on the side of a bus, uh, would you? No, 
<laughs> no.